Hello and welcome to the CounterPoint podcast. I'm your host, Peter Richardson. And today we're going to be talking about the cost of 5G smartphones. So, you know, we're, we're now going through the transition from 4G to 5G. Uh, and, you know, it's bringing some new capabilities in terms of the network, uh, speed, slower latencies, uh, which allow, you know, potentially some new applications. Um, and I'm very happy to have with me uh, two of our analysts to talk through uh, this. So we have Shobit Shravastava. Hi, Shobit. How are you today? Hi, Peter. I'm great. And, and we have Ethan Chi, who's based in China. Hi, Ethan. How are you today? Hi, Peter. I'm doing well. Thank you. Great. Okay. So let's let's get into this. So as I said, we're, we're going through this sort of transition from uh, 4G to 5G. Uh, you know, typically when a new generation of cellular technology comes in, it's more expensive at the beginning. Um, and that certainly happened with 5G, but we're seeing the prices of 5G phones coming down pretty fast. So, you know, let's discuss some of the, you know, the factors that are driving the way in which prices are declining here and, you know, how quickly we might expect to see, you know, comparable prices with 4G phones. So, if I can start with you, Ethan, what do you think are the main factors that are driving the cost uh, for 5G smartphones right now? Yeah, actually, 5G actually enable a lot of new experience, but actually, there is a cost associated with the greater experience enabled by 5G. Actually, like the uh, the super fast data rate and the ultra low latency, actually, most of this uh, cost increase comes from the 5G baseband itself and the related radio system. To make it simple, and uh, I think a 5G modem needs to process massive data within a sub millisecond time slot. Namely, it has much more you know, uh, computing and lot capability compared to its predecessor. And the cost increase in the radio system is primarily due to the more uh, frequency bands in, uh, also introduced with 5G. And the wider batteries uh, supported by 5G uh, also complicates the radio component designs. That's all. Okay, excellent. Thanks, thanks, Ethan. Yeah, and we'll, I think we'll talk a little bit more about some of the uh, the issues around um, frequency bands a little bit a little bit later on. Um, turning to you, Shobit. I mean, is it, is it just the 5G uh, baseband that's that's adding to the cost here, or other you know components impacted as well? Absolutely, Peter. Uh, it's other components as well. Uh, as Ethan rightly mentioned, it, the biggest cost that comes uh, with a 5G phone is the baseband. But there, there are added components like envelope trackers uh, that enable uh, better battery efficiency. There are uh, power management ICs for the added chips that you have that enable better battery management for uh, the phone. Uh, and then there are obviously the added RF components uh, that go along with the baseband, enabling the whole 5G experience. Apart from that, it's not just 5G that is, you know, adding up the cost of the new premium phone. Uh, there are uh, components uh, like display. Uh, we have 90 hertz display, 120 hertz display that are driving up the cost of overall smartphone in the segment. Yeah, we're seeing, I, I guess, you know, some of the ultra premium phones um, have in general been getting more expensive over the last few years and i guess we're, we're all kind of looking forward to uh you know the new iphones coming in shortly that are likely to kind of reflect you know quite a bit of the technology that we've seen in in android uh phones over the last few years as well so you know getting the the high refresh rate screens um you know even more complex camera systems so these i guess are all adding to the the bill of material cost is is that fair Exactly my point. So it's it's not just the 5G that is driving up the cost in the premium segment. It is these these new technologies, multiple cameras. We, have, we started seeing this trend a few years ago when OEM started putting up two cameras in the back. And that's, that trend has, has caught up and has, you know, a better use case as well. Uh, Apple is going to use AR in their phones in the future. And maybe that is something that will be enabled by uh, multiple camera setup and, and other technology as, as well. Uh, and that definitely adds up to the cost of a smartphone. Apart from that, as I mentioned before, uh, displays uh, in the premium segment, uh, it's uh, uh, better refresh rates that we are now seeing uh, 
earlier it was just 60 hertz and now we are seeing 90 hertz 120 hertz and even 144 hertz screen in uh, in uh, the premium segment driving up uh, gaming segment delivering better experience for the user so these all are combined that are adding up the cost of the phone in the premium segment and i guess also you know foldable displays we've seen a few uh foldable display phones i mean do you think they will take a bigger share of the market i mean they've been a you know a kind of a tiny but interesting little niche is that likely to become more prevalent you suppose we do have a better outlook but that will be uh, i mean not this year at least uh, post 2022 2023 will will have better acceptance of those devices uh, at this point they still remain expensive because of the screen they use uh, it's it's expensive but uh, we see that that it is a trend that that we, we we estimate that going to pick up in a few years when the phones become a little bit more affordable all right so turning back to you ethan um you know, there, there are multiple component vendors within the overall supply chain for a smartphone. What role do they play in, you know, driving down the cost of 5G smartphones relative to, to 4G? Because I, I guess a lot of the component vendors are the same, right, in the 4G ecosystem and 5G. So what role do the component vendors play here? Yeah, actually, like what happened actually in the 4G year, actually key components vendors I mean, particularly the 5G chipset players like Hong Kong MediaTek, actually, they have been playing a critical role in the 5G device ecosystem. You now, back in early 2019, there were, at that time, there were very limited 5G you know, solutions available in the market. And uh, even the, the solution is very limited, but all, actually all of them were, bound, uh, were bundled with premium smartphone platforms, like the Snapdragon, you know, 855. So they also using uh, the separate and standalone baseband uh, and transceiver to support 5G. You know, all these factors led to the high entry price of the early 5G models. But by now, actually, most of these uh, baseband players have made a significant progress in 5G platform development. They are introducing, you know, highly integrated chip size and 5G uh, now is, is spreading to a lower, lower price tier segment, as you mentioned. And the smartphone actually OEM now have more, you know, 5G chipset options. So they have a very good chance to hit the right balance between the cost and the performance. So, yeah, we think the, the price will, you, will come down. Thanks. So um, when we're thinking about the frequency bands for 5G, um, Ethan, you know, that they span a huge range, right? So from down in sort of 600 megahertz range, which we see in the US, all the way through to also in the US, actually millimeter wave uh, being implemented. But many other markets are, are using, you know, mid band in the sort of three two three gigahertz range, um, which is a bit closer to, to 4G, I guess. But can can you talk through you know what are the differences required um, to implement five G at, at these different you know, very different uh, frequency ranges? Yeah, there's a very you know significant difference you know across all the market. Uh, you know, in the first batch of commercializing five G service uh, globally, so like. American actually is the only market maybe now is still uh, very focused on the, the millimeter wave deployment, but in the other markets like China and Korea and Japan, uh, maybe uh, most markets in Europe actually is more focused on the C bed or the mid, uh, mid bed, uh, we call it sub six. But, uh, so, but uh, I think it's still early to, to, for the OEM to consider, you know, uh, to support the, uh, you know, global roaming. 5G roaming at this time, but I, I would say actually, you, if, when it comes to the smartphone design for 5G, I would say actually sub uh, six jackers now has a more mature system because a lot of market, uh, you know, actually is uh, focused on the sub six. So that also they have more diversified supply you know, from both chipset players uh, like Qualcomm and, and the traditional radio components players, you know. 
So I think OEM tends to use very, you know, highly integrated RS uh, front modules, but uh, it will combine these modules with discrete radio components to finish the design for sub six. But when we're talking about the millimeter wave actuates a tenor in package modules, you know, with fully integrated millimeter wave RF system actually is, pro is proved to be the best uh, uh, practice right now. You know, uh, actually got Qualcomm actually is a dominant player for this uh, solution. Okay, thanks, Ethan. So um, I, I guess millimeter wave comes with a, an additional cost. So Shobit, if I can turn to you, um, you know, what drives that? additional cost with millimeter wave? Is it just that there's a, you know, a more limited um, range of countries, so the, the economies of scale have not arrived there yet? Or is there something more fundamental that's, that's driving the cost increase for, you know, these millimeter wave deployments? The added cost for uh, a millimeter wave in smartphones is basically from the antenna and the front end module that you need for uh, successfully running millimeter wave. Although uh, the 5G baseband has the capability of millimeter wave as, as well, but you still need the millimeter wave antenna to uh, amplify uh, the high frequency uh, millimeter waves, right? So you need front end module RFs, filters, uh, passives, and uh, the millimeter wave antenna itself. So, and there's only one player in the in the smartphone space that is actually doing millimeter wave um, packaging and that is Qualcomm. They have their own uh, millimeter wave antenna and that 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 kinds of kinds of cover everything in just one small chip. Uh, but that also you need to put multiples in a in a, in a smartphone. So uh, you could use just one of those QT uh, series chipset that they have for millimeter wave. But then the the, the waves are so uh, fragile uh, that if you uh, even put your hands on the antenna, uh, they won't be able to uh, access your phone. So th that is why uh, OEMs, which we have seen implement millimeter wave, they try to have multiple antennas around the phone. Three is what we have seen most commonly in phones. Uh, one at the top, two on the side. So however you hold your phone while playing sideways or while talking um, normally, uh, that is the configuration we have seen and using obviously three antennas and three chips uh, for millimeter wave, that kinds of add to the cost of the smartphone itself. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, it, it's sort of well understood that, um, you know, when you get up to these sort of super high frequencies, uh, you know, the, the radio propagation is, is difficult. Um, so even from the base station downwards, you know, there's a lot of uh, potential for the signals to be disrupted, um, which is why when you look at a coverage map of, I don't know, New York, um, and looking at the millimeter wave uh, propagation pattern, it's, it's very tiny, you know, areas around the, around the base stations. So I guess, you know, it's, it's equally as complex on the, on the device side, but, you know, thinking through, um, you know, how we transition. So as, as, you know, we've seen 5G launch initially in the U S, um, Korea, China, you know, some markets in Europe. Um, but, you know, how quickly are we going to see 5G transition take place in emerging markets? You know, we're seeing 4G smartphones, pretty low price. I mean, show a bit, what's, what's, the, what's the lowest price of 4G right now? I think the lowest cost you can get is $30 or even less uh, 4G phones. It's, it's less than $30 for a basic 4G phone if you want one. Right, thanks. So the the millimeter wave uh, challenges is you know considerable. Um, you know we we see it both from the from the base station down and also on the on the device. There's there's a you know we've seen five G now launch in in you know quite a number of, of mature markets U S China Korea um, several markets in Europe um, and uh, spectrum licensing is is sort of going on all the time, but. I guess there's a question about, you know, how quickly we'll see, you know, 4G transitioning to 5G in emerging markets. So, Ethan, if I can, if I can turn to you um, on, on this question. So, how quickly do you think we will see um, this transition taking place in emerging markets, as well as the mature ones? 
based on uh, my understanding on the progress of 5G in different markets, I think the for emerging markets like India actually will take another two or three years to to see the 5G wrap up in these markets. So, but look back to some mature market like China, actually, it's, uh, it's very, uh, it's, you know, it's uh, the 5G the smartphone sales actually is, is growing and a very fast pace in China. Actually, now in July, actually, 80% of the smartphone sales, 5G smartphone sales come from, were, come, were from China market. And uh, we expect the total shipments in China, uh, 5G shipments in China will, you know, surpass 130 million uh, during this year, uh, 2020. So I think uh, all the other emerging market will benefit, all the, and the industry, whole industry will benefit from the ecosystem, ecology of the scale market like China and the US and the European market have, have a, wide, a very high penetration of 5G, you know, adoption. So as I think the other emerging markets will follow up and this will happen on that side and maybe two years or three years later. Okay, so by uh, 2025, we can expect to see a pretty broad penetration of 5G, although I guess 4G will still be you know, the, the dominant technology in terms of overall connections. Right, Peter. I would just like to jump in and uh, give you a case of uh, the biggest emerging market that is India. Here, uh, we have the government ready to do spectrum licensing, but then operators uh, are in a jiffy because uh, they haven't quite get, got back their uh, investments on 4G. Uh, it has been just four, four or five years till when, when the 4G first started in markets like India. And if you take some countries in Africa as well, uh, they kind of skipped 3G and just went straight to 4G and they've not got bad their uh, investments still. You take an operator like Geo who's ready with the money to uh, switch on their 5G networks, but then uh, the acceptability by other operators and uh, the device prices are still a factor for emerging markets. So as Ethan rightly pointed out, I think in the next two, three years, uh, emerging markets will see uh, uh, implementation of 5G and then when the devices also become quite affordable. So that is also one part that we need to look into. So how quickly do you expect prices of 5G phones to come down towards sort of the 4G smartphone level? Or is that something which will, you know, maybe never happen? I mean, uh, I mean, all the all the component players and OEMs are working towards it. Uh, we have seen chipset players like MediaTek and Qualcomm uh, quickly uh, getting their chipsets down to uh, lower price segments. I mean, uh, we have seen the 700 series with 5G. We have seen 600 series uh, Snapdragon from Qualcomm uh, having 5G. Similarly, uh, MediaTek quickly followed up with 800 series uh, Dimensity chipsets. That will be for the mid segment. Um, so that that was one of the biggest costs add on uh, the chipsets, and then you have the OEM who will who are trying to uh, squeeze in as much as they can in 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 the lowest price possible. Uh, so the the war between OEMs will will bring down the cost eventually. And as I said, the component players are working towards it as itself because there's a huge market in the emerging market. Uh, where uh, most of the smartphone market lies below $300 uh, price segment. So that is, I think, the sweet spot for 5G phones if, if they come down to 150 to $300 price level. Uh, that is when I think the bigger adoption will take place. So would you care to uh, take a stab at when we reach, let's say, 150 I think we'll start seeing uh, phones of one fifty dollar five G phones uh, by the end of next year. So second half twenty twenty one, we'll start seeing five uh, G phones in the price segment of one fifty dollars to two hundred dollars. All right, excellent. Well, let's let's see if that comes through. Ethan, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I, I think maybe and more chipset vendors actually they are they start providing the more affordable platforms to, to help break down the cost of the 5G smartphones. Actually, also, you know, just like uh, 
what happened in the 40 year old actually OEM can always find a way to if they have the the more options they have found a way to you know to cut down the cost and maybe just uh, you know have the different uh, network performance so they always will have to you know, to bring down the price of the 5g i think uh, yeah i agree with the that uh, the price point actually below 200 us dollars maybe will will happen you know in the next year yeah all right well let's let's wrap it up there thank you very much gentlemen uh i think we've we've given that a good go um you know but we're just sort of scratching the surface here so if you want to reach out to the team to talk about uh, pricing. We do a lot of analysis of uh, bill of material costs in general. So um, anyway, just leaves for me to thank uh, Ethan and Shobit. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Peter. All right. And yeah, please do check back for the next installment of the CounterPoint podcast. Have a great day.